Welcome back to the Botch Pit. This is another session of Vampire the Masquerade 5th Edition. We've got Lenny, Nick, Brad, and Jill here. Hi, Dad. Hi. We're all looking at Brad as if he's going to say hello. No. <laughs> Ever the introvert. Hello. Yeah, we just stared at Jill until she said hello as well. So thanks for listening again. Uh, we notice there's been influx of people that are listening, and we appreciate that. I'm just wondering why you're all so biased towards Vampire of the Masquerade. Something wrong with you people. Why is it just Vampire of the Masquerade with you people? You want Vampire of the Masquerade? Fine. We'll give you Vampire of the Masquerade. But we are not covering the, the Anarch book. We are not covering the Camarilla book. I'll get the Camarilla book, and I'll read it, but I'm not talking about it because I don't want to get shot. And the Bruja book, uh, I'm sorry, the Anarch book, Bruja. I've heard there's no mechanics and it's all just all just story stuff. Lenny's raising his hand. Go ahead, Lenny. What do you mean by you people? <laughs> what do you mean by you people? Y'all vampire players make me sick. Uh, but yeah, it's so. I guess you guys want more vampire the masquerade, and uh, we'll give it to you. We're gonna see tonight who gets stressed out, who gets killed. I know that I've got Nick on edge pretty well. Brad earlier r- responded quakily to a, a message we had in Discord. That kind of made me chuckle. Lenny doesn't know what he's in for yet. Lenny doesn't know who Lenny is. Jill still has her safety wheels on. This is her second session with us. So I'm not going to be putting her in the direct trajectory of danger like the rest of everybody else. I want to remind everyone that my first character, first session in, Chris turned her into a vampire. No, it was the second that, session. No, that, that was, the, was first the first session. session. Wait, it, was it was the first, the first session. It was the end. It was the epilogue. <laughs> oh. uh, I need to point out that was the Chronicle of Darkness campa- zoo campaign. And that was a it vampire. The a Requiem vampire. Until then, <laughs> and there is a difference. To, there, there, it, there are differences between Nosferatu and Chronicles, and Nosferatu in World of Darkness. We're not going to get into it now, but don't you start getting all uppity with me, Mister, Mister Fancy Pants. I'm gonna get as uppity as I want. <laughs> oh, it's gonna come back to you, dude. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't phase me anymore. Yeah. <laughs> dude, I talked to him earlier today. He's been thinking. Nick, you still oh. got your cell phone on you? Yeah, actually, it's at twenty percent. <laughs> that's like that's how I feel right now. I'm at 20%. Yeah. All right. So just for a quick summary, Lenny, your character. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm playing a gang role enforcer by the name of Bartleby, a.k.a. Bart. Nick? Uh, hi. I'm playing Voltaire. You already said hi. Hi. You don't need to greet people again. <laughs> hi. <laughs> I'm playing Voltaire, who is a... French philosopher. Small- French philosopher. <laughs> Philosophizer. Um, he's a mathematician, and he is a Malkavian. And, yeah. All right, cool. And I'm playing Alexander Stein, who's a Ventru, and... You didn't say your name, Brad. Alexander Stein. What if they think you're Jill? No. <laughs> Should I I'm always Jill. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I, I'm offended for you. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm changing my name. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what was I? The uh, something of the primogen. You're the child of the primogen no, of the Ventru of the city. Yes, thank you. Oh, you're very welcome, Jill. And I'm playing Evelyn, the bartending bruja. The bartending bruja. It's our second session, and she's snappier with the lines than all of you. There's hope for us. <laughs> <laughs> bruja, bruja, <laughs> and that, there that it goes. So that was so half-hearted. We just got dumbed down again. All right. I can hear our views dropping. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, last session, some uh, some kind of shocking things happened. What happened at the end of last session, Lenny? The prince got got. The prince got got. <laughs> <laughs> the prince got taken out by uh, by Brad Sire. It, yeah. Yeah. And. Some other people were involved. A potential fanatical blood cults are involved. It's going to get good. But we need to point... the. We have to point out that the main focus of the game was they were given a mission to find and ferret out any Anarchs that might be left over in the city. Are you... Uh, is your character an Anarch? That's what you said last time. No, I mean, I remember you're a Bruja, and the Bruja technically left the Camarilla... But I don't think we covered if you're actually an Anarch or not. 
Did we say you're an anarch? I think an anarch kind of, you know, disguised as okay. not an anarch. Okay. I, I've, I've been working for like 12 or 13 hours today, so please bear it's with me, good. people. It's I should have listened to the last session again just so I can get a fresher. But, uh, all right, we're going to plow forward like we do. And if I make any mistakes, don't feel free to catch me up on it. Cool. Can't wait to retcon this entire, <laughs> this entire session. I have never retconned any. <laughs> I retcon all the time. <laughs> all right. Except for when it matters. Except what? How's random doing? Don't do this. <laughs> I won't retcon my own characters back into sur- into the game just because they're my characters. I'm not pathetic like that. I'm just going to keep taking out on the person who made it happen. Yep. Because I am. Pe- while I may be mature enough to not game. do, yep. you know. Po- <laughs> All right. Wait. Wh- oh, was it Prometheus that uh, gave the fire to the humans? Mm-hmm. And then Zeus had Eagle rip out his guts every single day? Yeah. Am I Zeus in this situation? <laughs> <laughs> you uh, wish you were. Uh, <laughs> I've got some news from you, Nick. <laughs> yeah. You uh, you like guts? <laughs> I don't mean like the 90s Nickelodeon show either. Yeah. Because everybody like guts. That's right. All right. So. <laughs> I was really hoping you go with that reference. I, uh, yeah, I got you. I got you. Moon rocks, baby. No. Uh. <laughs> How about, how about the 90s Nickelodeon moon rocks? It's the next night. After what happened, Lenny, you kind of just numbed. They kind of dismissed you. They didn't even follow up with anything. You just showed up. They did have you do one thing, which is help them clean up. Clean up the area. But they left. They told you to leave and dismissed you while they still had the body. And you did as you did. You went back to your, you know, you went back to the, back to the club, back to what you're doing. Did I say if your club is like living on the outskirts of the city, camping out? Did I say you guys have a place to go or anything like that? Did I ever follow up on that? No. All right. Well, we'll remedy that this session. What happened was as soon as they, as soon as the prince accepted you into the city. You remember in the session where you guys got presented to the prince and all that stuff? Yeah. As soon as you got presented in and they said that you could operate there and your sire was allowed to operate there as well, he pretty much sent you guys to, (laughs) why not, uh, a town named Revere. And he was pretty much like, you guys may take residence there. It's far enough outside of the city where I don't need to worry about everything that's going on. But don't be stupid. Stay off the radar. There is a... There is another kindred that is in charge of that area. I'll set up a meet soon. You can hunt in that domain. I have already gotten the permission for you beforehand. However, you are not permitted to kill within his domain. So, you show up, and pretty much what they did is kind of like a really shitty, low, you know, government housing, low income. Uh, gated neighborhood kind of type situation they have. Do you understand what I mean? Mm. And pretty much your club, you've got a clubhouse hidden in the back because like there's some woods towards the back and crappy little identical worn down houses that lead down the straight road. And then there's like a wooded area farther in the back. You've never been to Revere, have you? I haven't. It's been a long time. Mm. Just fucking... <laughs> it's like a park. And there's a park at the end of... Don't, fucking... don't do this. Don't do... don't do that. Don't do that. Worse yet, don't make me actually visualize Revere. <laughs> I'm not that mean. I think Michelle's actually in Revere. <laughs> All right. Uh, anyway, so that's kind of where you set up shop. And the first, you know, the first bunch of houses are empty, the townhouses. But as you get to the back, you kind of things get a little louder. And you know, in the back where there's a bunch of trees, it's kind of like a park. It's got trees, but hidden amongst that is a is a clubhouse. Okay. Where you guys all kind of just hang out and whatnot. So, since you were accepted into the city and not a lot of your club has been, pretty much it was you and your sire that were allowed to be officially residents of the city. And the rest are allowed to be there because you're, you know, you know your sire allows it. But you're the only other person who actually got like a haven there. Mm-hmm. You have one of the apartment slash townhouse type things there. To call your own. So, after what happened, you kind of just went home and crashed. 
Nick, where do we leave off with you? I was helping uh, Brad's character out of the, the car. No, you were no. cleaning. Oh, we were cleaning the car, yes. Yep. That's where we were. So you were cleaning the car? No, I'm cleaning it too. Yeah, with him. You're both cleaning the car? Yes. He's cleaning all the blood. And then all right, so you guys, spots. you know, he was there, and he was like, you know what, screw it, not my problem, and then he left because he was, you know, summoned by someone. You don't know who called him off, but he just left and was like, bye, peace. Which kind of offended you, but there isn't a damn thing you could do about it because he was just like, I'm leaving, and left. So you're like, okay. <laughs> like, what are you going to do to him? He'll fold you in half. And he's not dumb enough to meet you in the eyes. Uh, I, I can't even walk straight. Okay. And I'm got, I am going to do some light retconning on some things. I am. Just to kind of smooth things over and keep the game moving accurately. So, you know, some hobo managed to break into the parking garage and he was walking around with a rattling can. And in the middle of this, Brad's character just goes, wait a minute. What's your character's name again, Nick? Voltaire. 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 You just said a second ago. Uh, you look at Voltaire and you're like, hold on a moment, please. And the, the, the hobo is kind of like, change, 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 just kind of walking around in the parking garage. And you're like, you, misfit. He looks over at you and he's like, ah, and you're like, clean. And you just met his eyes and threw the towels at him and walked away. And he's like, ah, right. <laughs> and he kind of started wiping down the car for you guys instead. I probably need that food. <laughs> you can't feed, you could feed off a hobo. He's depressed. Why yeah. wouldn't he be depressed? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, not all hobos are depressed. That's, that's... <laughs> so do you immediately feed on him? I can't. Why? I probably shouldn't. Not till he's done. Yeah, there you go. Let's check to see if you took the bait on that one. Good boy. All right, so we'll say you waited till he was done. He was like, anything else? And you're like, how's your mood? <laughs> 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 you, every time you go to talk to people, you should just put like a mood. Like, you should have, up, ha- up your larceny, per- just pretend up your no. dexterity, and just slip mood rings onto people willy fucking nilly, <laughs> and just be like, "I see your fuchsia. <laughs> Come here." No no, 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 no. I'll just, I'll just pretend to be a mute, and I'll just hold up a sign. How do you feel? <laughs> Negative ten to ten. <laughs> a smiley face to a sad face. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, so something kind of cool happens, and you didn't expect this. This is what surprised you. So. As this is all said and done, and you, you know, are you draining the guy dry? Hell no. All right, good. So I'm not going to make you roll for stuff right now because we're going to kind of gloss yeah. over some stuff to get the things. Uh, you feed off the guy. Yeah. And having some blood in you, you go down to hunger of one mm-hmm. because you didn't drain him. Nope. And something kind of miraculous starts to happen. The right side of things look a little blurry. Hmm. Not blank. Blurry. And you realize that though aggravated damage was done to your eye, it wasn't enough to permanently wreck it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's going to take a couple sessions, yeah. but I am going to give you the eye back. All right. Just because I don't want you to have a permanent disadvantage like that. <laughs> At least if I'm going to kill you, I'm going to kill you. I'm not going to <laughs> I'm not going to give you a permanent blind type thing when you're that far in and the dice kept being unfavorable. It's kind of mean. <laughs> you still better come in next week with an eye patch. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta remind me, man. You gotta remind me. I did. So don't yeah, get. I said remind me this, Brad. Day. Don't get used to my leniency in vampire, please. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm giving you that one because I feel shitty about doing that, and not giving you much of a choice in the situation. Didn't feel right. Uh, like you didn't kind of. Yeah, you made some stupid decisions, but I was also using a very prepared hunter to jack you up. Take this as a lesson, though, to all of you. What one. Hunter can do if he's got a little bit of training and knows what your weaknesses are. Right. This is not... You're not facing... Like, if there's a hunter around, you're not facing... You know... I mean, you could be facing, you know, a construction worker who just doesn't know what he's dealing with. There are very... Don't forget, Boston has a very Catholic presence and a Protestant presence. And where there's those people... The Inquisition is not far behind the Society of Leopold. Mm. So you go back inside. Lick the wounds. Lick the wounds. Good, bo- good boy. So he's, he's catching the shit. I'll catch you guys on it later. Uh, you go inside and your sire is nowhere to be found. He's just not there. Even more curious is you see like one or two of his bureaus are open. His drawers. Yeah. 
But, you know, you realize the sun's already coming up, and you so you go back to your old room, and you're like, worst case scenario, my sire will be pissed at me for sleeping in my old room. Yeah. And you went, and you just kind of pass out. Yeah, pretty much. I was at Hunger Force, so I was starving. Not anymore. You're not yeah, at Hunger One. I was. Yeah. But obviously, you, you're exhausted. You cleaned your floor. Good. <laughs> That's it. All right. It was bothering me. I, I know it was. Well, I mean, you had dudes spewing all over the yeah. floor. Yeah. Didn't appreciate it very much. All right, so. I hope fix that. <laughs> all right, so we're going to move forward to the next night. You, Brad, mm. curiously, you realize that your sire is still not back yet when you awaken. He's not there. He's normally here, isn't he? Yes. Okay. So, but you realize that you have a mission to do anyway. You've got a job to do. Right. So you phone Bartleby. And you, uh. I smoke signal him. <laughs> Well, you can't use technology, but you can still use the phone to kind of like, be like, hey, how are you? Do you want to hang out tonight and have some drinks? You know what I mean? You can speak like that, Mm -hmm. especially if you're using a landline. It's not that suspicious. Just don't be dumb. You know what I mean? What kind of powers do you have? Can you bring this powers today? (laughs) You have powers on a Chinatown? (laughs) 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 All right. So well, what that do you reminds what, me of a missing eye? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what are you saying to Bartleby on the phone? Uh, what time can we meet up tonight? Uh, I mean, I can be there whenever. Uh, Ten. That'd be preferable. All right. So you hang out, hang up, and then you call Voltaire. And what are you saying to him? Good evening. Hey, how's it going? Good. <laughs> Don't ask me how I'm doing, asshole. <laughs> oh, we're you're more, a lackey. He's an advisor. We're more casual. <laughs> <laughs> they're, more, they're more like peers. <laughs> they're more like peers, and you're more like an intern. <laughs> that could snap them in half. Yes, but you're an intern, so you know better than to do it. So, you also make an arrangement to meet up. Yeah. I'm, I'm just cruising through this because yeah. Jill's on borrowed time here. <laughs> uh, so, you all agree to meet up around 10. It's 10 o'clock rolls around. You realize it may not be a bad idea. You did speak with that woman yesterday, and you did vomit all over her bar. Mm. And you do have the phone number to the bar. Would you like to... Uh... Yeah. Okay. So, would you like to speak to her and give her a phone call about possibly meeting up? Because she said she might be able to help out with everything? Yes, as well as apologize. All right, so the phone starts ringing. Go ahead. All right. (laughs) (laughs) Hello? Yes, good evening. This is... Did we even introduce ourselves last? I think we did. Okay. So, I, I mean, think so, I, yeah. I knew Lenny's character best. No. You guys didn't say very yeah, much. Yeah, you guys didn't say anything. You're like, oh, Lenny. Yes, who would have yeah, thought that the gangrel know. biker would have familiarity with a bar fly? Uh, bar owner, give her some credit. She has worked hard. Thank you. How You're do welcome. you know? I don't, but I imagine she did if it's You're her bar. You're just defending bar. her because she's your girlfriend. Ooh, so has got a girlfriend. I don't And? <laughs> it worked in third grade. <laughs> You're like, you've gone away. I'm like, shut up! <laughs> Don't bully me. I threw a lot of rocks at her to get her attention. I'm like, punched her in the arm every day. Pulled her hair. I have never run so fast in my life. <laughs> Yeah. But no, I don't think I don't think they I actually did I, introduce because they ordered the drinks. Rega- no, he did it. introduce himself. We're, I, I mean, are, I can't remember. Are we editing the past and saying they introduced themselves? Because they didn't speak at all. They didn't speak at all. No, they didn't. No, I only spoke to. I'm gonna trust you. He got a whiskey. He got a. Yeah, However, he still got the information as well. It's not gonna be very hard for him to get you to understand who he is. Okay, I'm the guy that got blood everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so Brad, <go> yeah. <clears throat> Yes, good evening. This is Alexander from the other evening where my companions and I came in. Yeah, I, th- I think I recall. What can I do for you, Alexander? Uh, would it be feasible to 
come by at some time during the night to speak with you again. <laughs> as well as formally apologize. I suppose I'll allow it. All right. Uh, what time works good for you? Um, 1030 sounds good. 1030 <laughs> sounds good. <laughs> I would just move that one along. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We shall see you at 10 then. 10 30. Yeah. As I can't even remember the time that we just said. All right. See you then. <laughs> Nick. You, your that character gives him butterflies. Call I've ever heard. <laughs> no, I just. <laughs> uh, 10 30? Uh, I'd be concerned. It sounds like he's getting flustered. His character might be moving in on your girlfriend's character. It's awkward. It's like AOL all over again. I'm not even going to get to that. <laughs> I'm setting up the meeting at the place that I just vomited all in. Why would I want to go back? <laughs> but you did it. <laughs> all right. So you hang up the phone, and you realize that you're about to have three. Again, mind you, you're an anarch. Do you understand what an anarch actually is? I mean, kind of. What is an anarch? Uh, in Vampire the Masquerade. Okay. Re- rebelled from the. No, what's that? Rebelled from the uh, the government or the society. That's... Okay, the Camarilla. Yeah. Close enough. Yeah. So the Camarilla is composed of a certain number of clans, but things have changed recently, and a lot of people deviated away. The Camarilla has adopted a point where they used to accept everybody into the Camarilla automatically. Like, a vampire was sired, and they were considered part of the Camarilla. Not anymore. Now you actually have to, like, be invited, petition in for it, go on a probation. It's a whole set of, It's a gentleman's club. And what happened is anybody who wasn't, typically the Camarilla drives out of the city. They're like, get the hell out. You're going to meet final death if you stay here okay. because you're not one of us and you're not protected by us anymore. Now, a lot of the Anarchs are like, why the hell should those douchebags have control of Boston? Like, Boston's a place of liberty. What the hell? Why did they have it? You, know, you understand what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Makes sense. So, and again, they're all over the place. But they have to operate like with guerrilla warfare mm-hmm. because if you get caught and you're an anarch and they told you to leave and you didn't leave, yeah, it's bad times. You're for bad times. You know, in best case scenario, you know, you get staked and thrown into another city. But typically they'd just rather Cut your head off. just take you out, move you out. Makes sense. Okay. So just so you understand yeah. your place in this. Got it. Now, what is your... Uh, can I see your character sheet for a second? Is that your sheet over there? Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, so. You have three of Streetwise. So give me a roll of Intelligence plus Streetwise. And I'm going to put you at Hunger of one. Okay. Do you know how Hunger Dice work? One Hunger Dice thrown in there? Yeah. It's not on top of that. It's instead of these regular dice. Yeah. So while your Intelligence is two and your Streetwise is three... Then you've got five dice. Four regular, one hundred. Yes, thank you. You got it very quickly. Good. Makes sense. Seven and up one is a success. success. What's that? Seven and higher is a success. Six and higher. Six and higher. And normally now the difficulty is based on how many successes you can get. This is not going to be a very difficult roll. You just got to give me one success. <laughs> Those don't count. It's got to be on the surface. <laughs> what are we looking at? Two successes, or either of them a zero? No. Okay. So two successes. You realize now that he has told you his name, uh, because you didn't get, again, because you just mentioned, you didn't get to introduce last time, correct? Correct. So now, you realize you know that name. He's the child of the boss Ventru of the city. So you've got the prince, the seneschal who's like an advisor to the prince. Okay. And they have a smaller like group of advisors underneath them, kind of like Congress. And each clan that's represented in the Camarilla has a person that represents that clan in the city. Okay. Do you understand? Yeah. And He's the, the son of that representative. Yeah. Advisor. And the Vedru are the most affluent clan there is. Gotcha. They're the ones with the money, the power, and influence. Yeah. And you also realize that you had the child of the primage and Vedru of the city vomiting in your bar. A night ago. <laughs> the one that was the most mess is like, ah! 
<laughs> it's the one that's the most refined. <laughs> and you weep for the city. Okay. All right. With that said, so now you realize, though, as it clicks and you realize who he is, this situation might get a bit hairier than you thought for a couple of different reasons. One, yeah, he'd make a good source of information. He'd make a great source of information if you could play your cards right. But what happens when your Anarch buddies start to think that you're not just going undercover anymore and maybe you're getting a little too friendly with the Camarilla of the city? And two, chances are this guy's not stupid. He No, he's... he's chances are. Chances are he's not that stupid. And in all fairness... As walks into a door. Well, no, no, no. Let's be fair here. All pretty much all of the mistakes that have happened to Alexander stem from the fact that we're all new to playing the Vampire Fifth Edition system, and because of that, you're, you've all done some pretty stupid things in it because you didn't really realize how quickly things can escalate. So let's give everybody the benefit of the doubt. Look at you! You ripped off a woman's arm, beat her with it, and then fed off her in the middle of an alley. I was hungry. <laughs> That's the whole point. <clears throat> Look at you. Which one of you was the one talking about your powers in the middle of the city walking? It was through? both of us. I'm not taking, <laughs> not taking 100% responsibility on this. Okay. If you really think about it, you two Shut have up, done... Shut up, to save your ass. You two have done more stupid things than he's done. Think about that. He's just had worse luck with his shit that's happened. Yeah. I'm, I'm defending you on this one, Brad. You, you know what the best thing I didn't attack too? Brad. Huh? I didn't attack Brad. No, but I just want to be preemptive. But you, know, you know what's funny, too? <laughs> preemptive defense. Our stupid shit... Came back and bit him in the ass the most, though. <laughs> oh, that's the best part. If you can do stupid shit and it doesn't affect you, it's a good time. <laughs> All right. So what are you doing now that you're kind of understanding the situation you're in? Is there anything you want to do? Any thoughts you have? Um, I had a contact mm-hmm. in the last session. Okay. But how much are we allowed to say on phones? Or on the you, phone? Nothing. Nothing. I mean, technically, you don't follow the same rules as the Camarilla. You can do whatever the hell you want. It's a Camarilla rule. But you also don't... The reason that that rule's in place is because you don't know who's listening. In the Second Inquisition, the clearing of London, the bombing of Venice, the all, the stuff in Sicily, all of that stuff happened because humans found out that you guys even exist. And that's why you don't use the phones anymore. <laughs> Fair enough. So part of that's not really just a Camarilla rule. It's a lot of good common sense. Makes sense. Um, scratch that then. I'm just going to make sure my bar is empty by 10. What are your disciplines? Uh, celerity, potence, and presence. Okay. So, uh, uh, but here's the thing that we also could take into account. You're playing an Anarch. You could still communicate certain things using code words and stuff like that because I mean humans do that because you had a burner I remember saying that you had a burner okay but if you're smart about it and you use like terminology nicknames things like that then you can get away with a lot more or do you just want to sit on this for now yeah I'll, I'll hold off for now that's probably sure. a, it's probably a good decision just make sure the bar is empty so we're closing up at 10 with your background are you actually passionately against the Camarilla or are you kind of just not in agreement with them so you don't want to exist within them or are you waging a war against them like what is your character's stance on the Camarilla not waging a war because we never talked about that uh, no we didn't because I didn't really have a viewpoint on it that's okay not waging a war for sure but mostly just don't agree with their politics so not really with them so you subversively help the other combatants yeah is that the plan like you like to be an information broker is that what you're trying to do yeah Okay. So, is your character out? What is, does your character have any goals? Is she out to make a profit? Is she out to gain power? Like, what does your character want? I'd say she's kind of content right now, just, you know, getting by with the bar. and. But know, what's her long-term goal? Long-term? And remember, she's a, a vampire. She's got a very long-term. True. It's or you're not on the spot or anything. This is just kind of a, we didn't cover this, and I'm curious as to, 
So, if it's anybody listening who's wondering why we didn't deal with this before the game, we had we've had some time crunch issues, and we pretty much told Jill we'll, we'll just start playing, and we'll figure out as we go along. And also, Jill has never played a World of Darkness, Chronicles of Darkness type game before, right? What what games have you played before, Jill? D and D. D and D. Yeah. Okay. What edition? Five E. Five E. Heard Five E solid. Yeah, it's fine. So you're probably not used to having to have any sort of character background for the most part. Is that not correct? In depth. Yeah. Okay. All right. So what we'll do is we'll move away from that for now. Okay. I'll move over to them and get them together. I just want to get some background on what your character would be thinking and you know what you'd be doing with. Sure. So it takes time to think about that. Yeah, I can do that. All right. So we'll say it just so happens that you guys arrive at the same time. You both pull into the bottom parking garage and what do you do you have drive? I have one. Okay. I have one in drive. So we'll say you drive some like little huh, what do you want to drive? <laughs> A VW Beetle. <laughs> what's your What's your resources? Two. Okay. So we'll say you've got like a, a like a couple of years old VW Beetle. Nice. So nothing crazy. Definitely affordable. But you've got resources too. You're doing all right. Okay. So you pull up in your <laughs> you pull up on your motorcycle. Yeah. What do you ride, by the way? Are you familiar with bikes at all? Roadster, Harley. Okay. All right. Oil leaker, but sure. Okay. I, I love Harleys, but man, they oh, I know. bleed oil. I know. They're the turtle beaches of motorcycles. <laughs> they are the turtle beaches. <laughs> <laughs> that is a great example. The quality is actually as good as they say, until it's not. <laughs> All right. God, that was the nerdiest fucking reference ever. But it was good. I know. I like it. That was a good one. Nick. You you get you get out of here. You see him pull in, and you're just like, <laughs> get like a little beep at him, which really sounds like a like a bicycle horn. <laughs> it's just <laughs> because it's a beetle. And is it a convertible? Sure, beetle. Yeah, let's give you one. Let's do it. Let's do this all the way. Let's hope you forget that during the daytime. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> vampires. Contrary to belief, can be a wait during the day. You just have to keep rolling to do it. It sucks. Can't go in the sunlight. <laughs> you will burn. It's a bad time. Do they still have? Ironically, a... you can get to a point where you can walk around the sun, though. Okay, I was going to ask if that was still there was still one of the clans I think that could do. Uh, clan, fortitude. But, uh, fortitude yeah. soaks aggravated damage, but not just that. He can technically use Protean, I think. Yep. But I'm not sure. Oh man, I'm not too familiar. Oh, they changed oh, a whole bunch yeah. of stuff. We're not going to get into that now. Oh, I think I'm thinking of a different game then. Well, yeah, it was it was Vampire, but it wasn't... Well, Vampire the Requiem, the, some of the characters have something called Coils of the Dragon, which is by the Ordo, Ordo Dracul, and they can actually override curse, like, a lot of the symptoms of the curse of vampirism. And they could be like, ha ha, I can walk in the sun for a couple hours. I think but then if they the screw it up and forget, <laughs> you know, it runs out for some reason, like, oh man, this is a bad idea. Should have just gone to bed. Yeah, I think, I, I think that's the one I'm thinking of. Okay. All right. So everybody, please go listen to my beginner's guide to Vampire the Masquerade, Vampire the Requiem, and Meiji Awakening. Promethean going up this week. Link's on the top right hand corner. I don't know where the link is. Don't say that. <laughs> 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 I haven't figured out how to do that. <laughs> I think that's something to look into this week. Okay. So, you walking up to each other? Yeah. I guess. Okay. When well, you let, you're still upstairs. <laughs> no. They pulled into the garage. <laughs> Unless you want to say you're already waiting downstairs for them. Why is that such a hard thought to me? Why do you? Because <laughs> it's hesitate? Brad. Hi. It's also because it's a vampire and everything that you. Everything. Wow. Do I have you guys that scared yes. for yes. everything? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good. <laughs> it's delicious. All right. Yes, I'll wait then. Upstairs or down yeah. the garage. <laughs> He really is that nervous. Okay. Hi. All right, you both arrive. Hey. Hello. You ready to go? Yeah. How All you right. been? Not too bad about yourself. Doing good. You're this good. is how natural people talk. <laughs> <laughs> I am fine. Are you fine? Yes. <laughs> good. How has your day been? <laughs> All right, let's go get him. All right. Okay. So you both approach, you know, both approach the elevator. Head on up. Head, head to his floor. And what are you doing right now? 
cleaning up, trying to be presentable as best I can. You realize that after sleeping a little more and feeding, your vision is still blurry, but you can make things out. Okay. And as you look at yourself in the mirror, Hmm. because yes, most vampires can't see themselves in the mirrors, you realize that even though the a lot like some of the scarring is remaining on the flesh, Mm -hmm. there's really not much you could do about that. Right. Uh, You realize that the pale. The pale of the eye that had been damaged mm. is starting to gain back its color. Right. The pupil, stuff like that. Because storyteller is generous storyteller. <laughs> all right, so you're just kind of checking yourself out in the mirror, getting ready and all that stuff. Yep. You guys both walk in and you see him. His back's to you as he's in a mirror. He's in a mirror. You hear the elevator ding behind you. Finish cleaning up and turn around. Check my cufflinks and tie. He turns around, checking his cufflinks and his tie. And you realize that... His derpy eye doesn't look so derpy anymore. <laughs> I'm not allowed to speak when spoken to, apparently. <laughs> no, you're allowed to... That's not ever anything I said. I never said that. Yeah. Give me a wits and etiquette roll to see if you know that. <laughs> Let's do it. Really? Yeah. Oh, fuck. If you're going to be a whiny little bitch about these things and try to be passive-aggressive, make your roll. I wasn't being passive-aggressive. <laughs> I was just being a dick. All right. I was just being plain aggressive. God, I hope you botch. Just gonna be like, hello, fuck you. Just, just walk in. <laughs> you literally just reach up and rip his soul patch off. Cause yes, I didn't forget you have a soul patch. Yep. I shaved down to and it. And I said originally you look like John Travolta in Pulp Fiction. No, you look like John Travolta in Gold in Swordfish. Okay, you realize that you can talk. <laughs> ah, look at you, you getting your eye back. Good for you, man. Thankfully, I look around to make sure no one's else is around Mm-mm. okay that's uh, probably concerning i do want you to give me a that's actually probably really concerning that nobody else is around especially for me mm-hmm. bear with me here roller give me a wits bear. plus performance roll uh, wow your eyes getting better suddenly back flipping <laughs> he crashed through the window. <laughs> He's that excited. Huh. I wonder if he can soak that. <laughs> One? Yep. Alright. Uh, you... The events from last night are, like, wearing on you a little bit. You're a little rattled, but you're pulling it off not looking that way. Uh, Brad mm. and Nick, both of you give me a wits plus insight roll. Ow. I never thought I'd use that. I'm glad that's in here. Oh. Do you have a character sheet for Voltaire, Nick? It's right here. Okay. Three of sixes are successes. Hmm. Any any zeros? Uh, one of them was a zero. Because remember, if you get a zero, and I think it's no ones. Is it, if you get two zeros, they count as it's two. Two zeros. Right? Okay. All right. Yeah, so so two you zeros realize is a super is like a super. You know, you could tell there's something a little weird going on with your boy Bartleby, mm. but you can't kind of quite get a read on what it is because he also succeeded. You just did better, so yeah. you can tell that he's something's a little weird with him. Are you, do you want to say anything? You're gonna hold it to yourself or hold it to myself? Okay. All right. Hope the advisor is seeing the same. How many did you get? I got one. He didn't notice a damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, they're my hopes and dreams. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Okay. So, you're all together. What are you saying to them? <clears throat> all right. Maybe tonight will go much better. I went and spoke with the woman at the bar. Arrange for another meeting. Hopefully it'll be less crowded this time. As do I. Hopefully I won't hit the door. As a way to introduce myself. Lenny, what hunger were you at last time we played? Dos. Never mind, though. Okay. What hu- what hunger were you at last time? I was two, and then at the end I became three. So you're at hunger four. Okay. Not okay. Okay, you okay. are the highest you can have is five. 
Uh, Living on the edge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Precise. you are nearly twitching <laughs> with your hunger. And you realize you've got to do something about that before you try to go into that bar or you're going to do something dumb. However, you guys said she, you, you told her you'd be there at 1030. It's now like 1015. No, it's like 10. It's just straight 10. Because I said you got there on time. What are you saying? What are you doing? I don't really know in this situation. Is it like... Your vampire is super hungry. And he's one dot away from being as hungry as you could possibly get as a vampire. Is there anyone else in this apartment complex? Is it an apartment complex? I don't it's remember what a, this looks like. It's a very high-end... You don't, it's like a hotel, actually. Okay. A very high-end hotel. What is your predator type? Uh, Sandman. Sandman. So he needs to be sleeping. Which, if it's ten o'clock at night, potentially someone else in this apartment building could be sleeping at that time. You are at you. Give me a wits plus. Bear with me here. A wits and politics roll. Don't forget those four fucking hunger die. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. All four are hunger. Oh, <laughs> no. Watch, 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 watch. <laughs> One. Yeah, but it's a messy success. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you very clear. Well, this really for it's a thought for to have this sort of thing. There's really no backwards effect I can have happen. Mm-hmm. You realize how stupid it would be to eat someone or feed off someone in the same building as the primogen of the city. What level of dumb could you possibly be? What's your intelligence? Uh, it's like four, isn't it? Yeah, it is. You've got no excuse for being that stupid. <laughs> hey, Nick. Yeah. Not I would be... advise against doing that. I would advise you. Narrator says, don't. <laughs> <laughs> but player says, no. Storyteller who loves disaster, <laughs> he's down with it. So, I would need to feed on the way there. Somehow, some way. Uh, give me another, give me a wits plus a cult. I don't know if you noticed, but anytime I'm going to give you helpful information, I make you roll for it now. I'm not just giving you the ways out. One success. You realize that one of the members of your group has the ability to make people go to sleep with a word. Can they do that though in this, I thought with... Dude's got dominate like he's got dominated three. Yes, he but, can pretty much look at someone and go sleep, and they will fall asleep. Is so that correct? You only had dominated bottom. one. Oh, okay. That's what it was. He's got you got mesmerized, this. right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Does yeah. it does it mesmerize? You could just be like sleep I, and I they'll so, pass yeah. out. Because I know there was something with bodily you, functions that you couldn't yeah, do. Yeah, he's a higher level. I remember this last time because I remember because I was surprised at how high he had it. Yeah, he tried to get those two witnesses that watched him eat shit to like go leave. away and like leave. But Look at this dude already pouring it. through Dominate. Oh, I got it. I got it again. Level. Well, no, because Brad- this is like no, a, it's okay. I'm actually gonna start digging into this we book did this talk week. About last time, we did. Yes, that's why. I, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, that it's just because you weren't at a high enough. I level never did my review for this book. I never did the review for V5. Our oh. game master, everyone. Well, no, I kept t- no, I kept saying <laughs> on the on the. Uh, if you remember, back when I first was doing the beginner's guide stuff, I said I was going to do a thorough review of Vampire Fifth Edition. Dominate cannot make subjects do things they could not do on command, such as sleep. Which I think it means I'd screwed up. But what level? I, at certain levels, you can do that, dude. What is it? Mesmerize level two. That's, that's it's characteristics of uh, dominate. Is it mesmerize? It's, it's under the characteristics part. Uh, mesmerize level two, isn't it? Mesmerize is level two, and so, I have triggers at. I have triggers at three, which is uh, the one without a name. So the what? What's it do? Does it allow you to change their memories? Uh, mesmerize? Uh, no, not mesmerize. The one that you don't have a name for. Uh, no, because I remember submerge, it's submerged directive is the name of this it. before. I think it's supposed to be this part right here, that's right above level four. I think that's actually what um, what submerged directive is supposed to be, or where its title is. So page two fifty seven in the middle. 
using mesmerize my target now and plant a post hypnotic suggestion. Chill, is your book down here? What page are you on, Brad? 257. Could you please open your book to 257? It's this part right here. So No, but what I'm wondering is, she has a newer version of the book. Oh. See if it got correct. Yeah. Hey, Tim Fagundis, if you're listening to this, thank you for passing me your copy of Vampire the Masquerade Revised, because mine got destroyed, and I missed it, and it's useful even for this one. There's still no name there. Matter. So you can't make them sleep anyways. All right, then. Oops. So, however, can you alter their memories? That's can what I want to know. I have forget. All right, so even if you took someone by force and knocked them upside the head, because your strength is high. Your strength is, like, ridiculously high, dude. Yes. You could kill them, though. Yes. Happened before. Yes. All right, I want to knock her out. All right, you blast what is her your in the brawl? chin. And but hold on, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> what is your brawl? My brawl is at four. You could just choke someone out. I also could snap their neck. No, but you've got brawl of four. That means you'd be rolling your dexterity plus brawl. But the last time he rolled really Seven well, he killed dice, them. Chris. Right, but if you planned to do it and that was your desired effect, it would work. Last time you were just like, I hit her in the okay, face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, okay. <laughs> if you say so, and, and she did. And oh my god. Now, if you make it clear your desired outcome is to choke a person out, and you roll and you get that many successes, you're just going to succeed at that goal. Okay. Right, Unless you fine. botch. If you botch, yeah, they're going to die. But if you get even one success, I mean, it's a human. <laughs> They're gonna go out, mm. and then he could use What's forget this podcast again. This sounds really bad. Ra- yeah, really <laughs> <laughs> God, even the simplest thing is risky with uh, us. <laughs> disclaimer: This is the gameplay for Vampire the Masquerade Fifth Edition. None of this is real. <laughs> Please don't arrest me. I'm too pretty for jail. Although it'd be we're still wondering quiet. who hurt you. Huh? Although it'd be a lot less quiet for you, or a lot more quiet for you. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> all right, so. As you make that roll and you think about all these different options, all those different things come into your head that there are potential ways to do this much easier. Mm. All right. Yo, I facilitated this and got you guys here. You guys talk about just a plan. <laughs> okay. So I said I I need to feed, making sure no one was around before I said that. And what are you thinking of, Brad? When he, all the stuff we just talked about passes right. through your mind. <laughs> Can you batter just some poor f- or do I even know what you need to feed on no we haven't discussed that but they need to well he did say he needs to feed yes so in game a way to be doing this without being meta plotty about it mm. and again yes the, even in general us doing this is a little bit of meta gaming kind of but I'm also trying to teach you guys ways to think outside of how you're thinking mm. you guys are way too dependent on yourselves you guys forget that you're a team. Like, at one point, you're just like, go get me food. And he goes to get you food, and everything goes wrong. Mm-hmm. You try to cover up the mess by yourself, everything goes wrong. You guys need to learn how to utilize each other's abilities and strengths. All right, All right so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to segue away from this right now, and I'm going to do some stuff with Jill's character okay. development. Okay, that's cool. Cool? Yep. All right. Cool. So, Jill, this woman who comes in, what's your generation? 13. So, out of nowhere, you hear uh, a motorcycle from outside, and you recognize the sound of it. And before you even get a chance to kind of shake your head and give a greeting, a woman walks out of the bar, and she's about six feet tall. She's a big chick, tatted up from the neck down. Some guy's some guy's like, hey, honey, I heard your ride. You want to ride something else? And before he can even finish the sentence, she just grabs him by the face and just throws him against the wall. You hear a resounding crack and he kind of grunts and falls. You kind of sigh with frustration and uh, your sire takes a seat at the bar. Her name is... uh, She's a tattoo artist. Just moved here from Oakland. And she goes by the tattoo name of Strychnine. 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 Alright. She is also an anarch. Are you writing all this down? Mm -hmm. 
Thank you. Uh, she is also... Huh? Last session when I asked, do you have any tattoos? And you're like, why are you making her like tattoos? Now she's the tattoo artist. That's her sire. <laughs> comes walking through the door. Well, I'm trying to picture what it. sort of anarch chick, <laughs> uh, what sort of anarch bruja chick could be fitting this in. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it feels like that's kind of a cool idea. Usually with the, it's always like all the vampire sires for some reason are dudes. Have you ever noticed that? Yeah. Because I remember when we were playing our game, not to segue away, but like, the Chronicles game that when you introduce a prince and you kept saying she, I was like, what? Well, like, no, because... It, it didn't make sense to me at the time, but now it does. Yeah, because they could still be called prince even though it's a female. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. I am not a... I, I, I'm okay with women in power, thank God. Because my wife You're is the boss of everything. Wine. So, she's like, how's it going? And now, mind you, she sent you out here first. So she knows everything you're doing. So I've got a question. Yeah. What's the relationship between a vampire and its sire? Okay. So a sire is the person that made you into a vampire. Okay. Child is pretty clear. It's the person that became, you know. And it's like C-H-I-L-D-E. It's not like just child. So, yeah. Okay. Any other questions for continue? It's cool if you do. Let you know if any come up. All right. So you came out here about a year and a half ago. And she came out about f- three months ago. So she's still settling in. Mm-hmm. You were kind of. What sort of person was your character growing up? Uh, she liked to fight. Tough chick? Yeah. Tomboy? All sort of stuff? Yeah, we can go with that. Okay. Why don't you tell me about your character? Flesh out some more. Like, tell me about how she ended up becoming a vampire. Who is Evelyn? Yeah. <laughs> like, I know you're used to probably having the, the DMs or storytellers tell you your character's background and stuff like that. Not really. I've written backstories before. I've just had more time to think it up. That's okay. Well, right now you don't. Let's go. Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> On the fly, baby. Welcome On the fly. The <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I feel like you get more earnest results when you do stuff like this. If you yeah. take too much time to write out, a, like, a thick backstory... It comes out contrived a lot of times. All right, sure. She grew up with a few sisters and was always fighting for attention growing up, I guess. You know, always got overlooked. Um, As she got older, she just had a few, you know, jobs on the go. Sort of like, you know, restaurant stuff here and there. Kind of how she ended up at a bar. It was kind of what she knew as she she grew up. Okay, what sort of of style... Hobbies, uh, sexuality. What sort of stuff did she fall under with that stuff? What do you mean? Can you? Well, okay. Was she like when I say style? Like, how does she dress? How does she carry herself? Hobbies. Like, what is she into? What does she like? And orientation is, you know, pretty clear. What sort of sexuality? Okay. Heterosexual, bisexual, that sort of stuff. Yeah. No, she's. I mean, style, like you said, tomboy is a good way to go. I would say somewhere between skinny jeans one day, cargo pants the next. Um, was she political? Her family was, so she got wrapped up in that, actually. Is, is something funny? I'm trying to figure out why Nick is having a meltdown in the corner. There's two noises <laughs> above me. <laughs> oh, okay. I was like, what did I do? It's like, <laughs> I was like, what? It's like cargo pants. I was like, Nick has a serious like, problem like, discussing sexuality. Whoop. What? What? <laughs> you can hear right above your head from coming from behind. Sorry, go ahead. Nick's <laughs> pulling its hair out. Really wish you had your phone ready for that. I would consider her heterosexual, but never really had a long-term relationship. Okay. Any tattoos, body modifications, stuff like that? Yeah, she's got a few ear piercings, some random tattoos. Not quite a sleeve, but some tribal stuff so, here and there. So here's what we're going to go with. Uh... Well, political or no? What did you say to that? She became, you know, more into politics the more her family discussed it. You know, it was sort of politics. Like, where where does she lean? Uh, she leans for the underdog. You know, um, that's kind of how she got wrapped up into the the rebel lifestyle of the anarch. Okay, all right. So I'll say she came from some sort of protest or some sort of event that she was involved with. And she kind of became friends and hit it off with this chick who said she was a tattoo artist. And you're like, oh, I have a couple, you know, I have a couple tattoos. She's like, oh, cool. She's like, what do you got? And you felt, you know, she and she was like, my shop's over here. And you were pretty close to the shop. 
And, you know, you went in there and she was showing you the work she's done and you thought it was pretty cool. And then she started asking you questions about why you were protesting and what you believed in. And you were like, you know, I hate the establishment. I'm all about the underdog. It's ridiculous that any one person can have this much power. And she was like, yeah, interesting. And next thing you know, you just blacked out. (laughs) And you woke up really fucking hungry. You ate a hipster and you had a good time. And she... And so you met, you know, you met her and she kind of started filling you in on what she's about and why and she's sorry that she did that without you know consulting you and talking with you and stuff like that but she thought that the cause needs people like you and that you'd believe in it and you'd go along with it and at first you were really kind of resentful but what you did is you kind of told your family that you're moving out of state and you did and you phoned them every now and then to say hi and let them know you're you know you're okay whatever you told them you're living in a different city than you are just in case they were to show up because one thing strict nine did beat into your head is the mat like she's like we ain't the camarilla fuck the camarilla whatever she was like but they are 100 percent correct about the masquerade shit and she filled you in on why vampires need to hide from humans and not get destroyed and stuff like that so she just takes a seat at the bar she's like how's tricks just, Why are you dying over here? Because I can keep hearing that sound effect, and every time I hear it, I look at Nick, and he just, you can see him die inside a little more. It's too many whoops. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's literally like. You know, this is why people think we're idiots, right? This is why? Well, all right, well, you guys are idiots. I'm, I'm decent. This is why. Yeah. Look at, listen to I look forward to the next comment play, where you get knocked down a peg. What's that? We already can't go any lower. But you oh, that's going never down. say that. <laughs> you can always go lower. All your characters right. are still alive, How man. How long have we known each other? Not long enough. It can all, all right, be- so she's like, how's tricks? <laughs> How's Trix? Like, how are things? Jesus. I love you, oh, I, I thought Trix was a person. Like, Trixie. Trix of the kids. I was so confused. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you gave a nickname to someone. I do give nicknames. Okay. But, no. She's just asking how are things. Yeah, it's going all right. She's like, all right, cool. What's new? Anything? You get anything? Yeah, I got some guys stopping by later. Yeah, who's that? Um, it's this interesting group came in. What was it? Was it the day before or the week before? The night before. The night before. <laughs> <laughs> I Time. lose track. How does it work? It's been a Regardless. few weeks. <laughs> they were here last night. Made a little bit of a mess, but they said they wanted to talk. Get any names? Yeah, I've got an Alexander Stein. Her eyebrows kind of pop up. And she's like... Yeah, I had the same reaction. She's like, what? Why is he stopping in here? I don't know. They're going to be here in like half an hour, though. She's like, well, it's been fun. Got to go. <laughs> she, immediately, she just gets, stands up and goes to turn. She was like, you probably shouldn't meet with them tonight. Why? Uh, I've heard some rumors that there's going to be some stuff going on tonight. And it's not going to be a good night to be around Mr. Stein, for sure. Care to elaborate? Nope. And she just leaves. <laughs> Just leaves. Right. She left you a tip though. She left five bucks. <laughs> How generous. <laughs> so, uh, give me a perception check. Give me a wits and awareness check. Wits and awareness. One success on the hunger die. Okay. Uh, from outside, you hear. Uh, two car doors slam pretty heavy. Like, boom, boom. And you look outside, and you see two guys in suits stepping out. They adjust their ties in the mirrors, and they start heading towards the bar. You do have backup working with you this night. Okay. They don't look like people that would normally be coming around here. I'm going to step into the back and let my backup greet them and try and listen to what they say. All right. What's your character's name? Evelyn? Yeah. yeah. All right. So first you, uh, they're like, hey, miss. And your back is like, yeah. Like, where's uh, Miss Evelyn at? We need to sp- have, have some words with her. She's like, oh, well. Full 
surface. Let's see how many fall on the ground. Just one. <laughs> Four. You're like, oh, she's not in tonight. And you're like, oh. These are unidirectional mics, which means they only record what's directly so, in front of them. It's right there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Uh, you know what we need? That spacing. So, so uh, she's like, oh, she's not in tonight. And one guy goes to nod, and then the other guy looks at her and he goes, you're lying. Where is she? He means, she's like, I don't know what you're talking about. And he's like, tell me where she is. And she just goes. She's out back. <laughs> it just points to the back door. What are you doing? There is an there is a an, an exit. The back exit. You do park out back as well. All right, I'm leaving. All right, you're you're just heading right out. Give me a Dex plus Ath roll. Athletics. What's that? What was the rule on Eros? What's that? What was the rule on Eros? Roll Eros? again. Roll them again, yeah. Mm -hmm. It also was on the hunger die. Yeah. <laughs> uh, messy hunger success. Die. It's a messy success. All right, so you literally just go... <laughs> It busts through the door. <laughs> it just should knock it off a hinge and it slams open. And you hop in your car and you just peel out. And you just haul ass out of there. You just go. And that's where I'm going to cut your story for the night. Thank you for listening. Part two will be up soon and we're going to work on that. Oh, wait. Thank you, Jill, for being here. Before you go. Thanks for having me. Um, I can cut it up. <laughs> well that was funny <laughs> oh, I hope that makes the final cut <laughs>